On the breakfast, vandalism of Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation NMPC Limited Depot responsible for petrol scarcity in parts of the country. Also on the breakfast, members of the Academic Staff Union of Universities are to paid November's salary in full, eight months of arrears withheld. We'll ask to embark on another industrial action. And don't forget, we'll also be looking through today's newspapers, analyzing the biggest stories of the day. Well, let me say compliment of the season. Welcome to a brand new day. It's the very first day in the month of December. And it's the breakfast. I am Messi Bopo. It promises to be another great day with exciting conversation lineup of it. As always, we start off with our top trending. That's uh, issues that are... Um, that has gotten a lot of Nigerians reacting, engaging in different strata, be it social media, offline, and what have you. Now, one of that is that the Nas Nigerian National Petroleum Company, NMPC Limited, has finally provided the reason, you know, for the recent fuel scarcity being experienced in Lagos, Abuja, and other parts of the country. Now, according to the NMPC, the blame fuel scarcity, because I've been very curious, and I'm sure that if you're curious why there's been petrol scarcity, I'm sure that you have an answer now. Whether or not this is something to go by, it's another conversation entirely. So the NMPC says that, you know, fuel scarcity and long queues at filling station on some road, you, we can actually blame that on some of the road projects and constructions that you have going on especially in lagos and in other parts of the state i'm trying to you know wrap my head around that he said that the gridlock is easing as nmpc has programmed vessels and trucks to unconstrained depots with massive loads out from depots to various states being closely monitored now, it, it might also interest you to know that sometime the Oil Marketers Association of Nigeria had talked about um, the fact that Nigeria should be ready to buy this product at any price. And that's because of the cost, you know, of transporting it. They were going to add an additional 13 naira, uh, you know, the cost of transporting the product, you know, to the dif different location. And so it might also be expensive and what have you. Another is that um, the same major oil marketers association of Nigeria had um, a few days ago mentioned and said that they were working with the NNPC to improve the distribution of petrol across the country. They said that their members uh, would be working late night during the weekend to bridge the product supply gaps and push out more products than, you know, it should have been, you know, normally. These were, uh, you know, some of the reactions for all marketers and what have you. But <laughs> uh, now an NMPC also said that national petrol stock of, they have a national petrol stock of over 2 billion liters, which is equivalent to over 30 days of sufficiency. And the big question is, why is there still scarcity? Now, with the reason that the NMPC has given, I mean, do you want to ask yourself, if, is that something to go by, really? Because... Fuel scarcity has become, you know, a normal practice and event in Nigeria. It seemed to be uh, something that's become part of our system and it's normal to just have fuel scarcity, but it's really stressful and, you know, very saddening. And for the queues, from my observation around, you know, some parts of Lagos, I, I don't think that it's the construction that's the problem. Now, I have seen several filling stations that are shut down entirely no you don't have any sign of uh anything going on no human being whatsoever some of these filling stations across some cities especially in lagos are not even selling so and you see the queue for instance this morning i saw a very long queue and that queue is not because of the construction, because at the time, you can't even find any construction work going on. People are queuing up to buy petrol because they are hoping that this filling station would be open so they can get the product. I'm just really wondering how that is a problem. It's very unfortunate for a country that, you know, it's an oil-producing country, for a country as Nigeria, 
we have all it takes to refine our products and what have you. And then you have the NMPC, you know, giving this excuse. I really don't know how that valid is, especially when you have the uh, oil marketers associate, um, you know, you have the major oil marketers complaining of you, the cost of landing and also the cost of, you know, buying and also the fact that they're also working to project and put out this product out there. It costs for a lot of concern. If we have this amount of, you know, petrol or uh, fuel, two billion liters of it, how come we still have, you know, the issue of scarcity? And is, is it really true that we're experiencing the scarcity because of the construction work? Because whenever you have all of the queues, it's because people are queuing to buy petrol in different filling stations. And in most cases, you don't have a lot of them selling. And so um, it's a lot to grapple with. But... I really don't know if the government and those who are stakeholders understand, you know, the pain that the people have to go through. The fact that the cost of transportation will be on the high and you don't even want to compare that to the fact that the current reality of the people in terms of salary and, you know, revenue, it's, it's, it's also in, on the increase. And so it makes it quite difficult. It makes life very stressful and very difficult for a lot of persons. But what exactly is going on? Why do we constantly have fuel scarcity? Especially when we're, you know, in this period, it's a festive period, it is festive December. It feels like it's a trend, it feels like it's a pattern. Now, on the other hand, you have the, uh, you know, uh, as the market is saying, well, we're not holding the product because that's the blame. People are saying it's usually because there's need to maximize profit. And so you have stakeholders holding this product so they can actually maximize profit. You know, at the detriment of who? The common man. Very f sad and unfortunate. Away from that, there's also another picture that made it, uh, another conversation that's on our top trending. is a Photoshop picture of Tunubu, Bola Tunubu, on a courtesy visit to U.S. President Joe Biden that surfaced online. I'd like to read a tweet, how he, you know, the, the tweet that generated that uh, controversy. So um, it came from a handle, Kennedy Nonso, at Kennedy Nonso 2. That's the Twitter handle that said, happening now at official bat on courtesy visa to U.S. President Joe Biden as part of his U.S. Uh, international agreement or engagement. And he said, obidiot, say Tunubu cannot visit U.S. based on his indictment. Uh, he cannot visit the United States based on his indictment. He is there right now, live with the U.S. President and let your be visit to. He also went on to say more people. Um, there's a lot that goes on on this, you know, space, especially Twitter. But, you know, how far can we, you know, go on with the issue of disinformation that will actually have an effect on you know, on a polity and what have you. So don't forget that Nigerians are very smart people. Don't forget that we have very, very intelligent people and people who are very swift with the internet and understand the dynamics of, you know, things. So when you think that you can deceive the people, uh, there was immediately a sudden reaction as regards to the fact that this is not, this is a Photoshop picture and uh, this actually is not true because uh, this didn't happen. So uh, it was photoshopped from the original picture where you have a certain president who visited Joe Biden. And that's what you can see. And if you look at it, really, you don't even need to be an expert. You will see that it's probably very photoshopped. I really don't know what, what's going on, but we have a lot of work to deal or to do when it comes, with, uh, when it comes to the issue of uh, disinformation in our space. Quite unfortunate. And then the same Twitter handle, Kennedy, he had to switch grounds. He said that, oh, this is actually the handiwork of a certain supporter or, uh, supporters of a certain candidate. That's, of course, the obedient. And that was uh, the thought. But if you'd like to check that out, I'm sure you can check the, you know, the handle Kennedy uh, non so on Twitter and you'll see all of the reactions and comment. And that's so much we can take this morning on our top trending. We'll take a break and when we return, it'll be time for us to go through you know, the front pages of national dailies. We call it off the press. Please stay with us.